somebody wrote me anonymous letters and some um, threats were coming that what you are doing you don't know in this man's world you are doing the wrong thing and you will suffer a lot so uh, kind of but i never thought of these things i think Uh, part of game Thanks for joining us for Building Pakistan a conversation with Pakistan's beloved institution builders to explore how they've built and really continue to build this young country I'm Benji Williams from Amal Academy and our guest today is Mrs Sultana Siddiqui who's the founder and president of Hum Network She started Hum in 2004 with a 24-hour entertainment channel Hum TV and has grown it into one of Pakistan's fastest growing entertainment companies adding channels like Hum Masala, Hum Sitare, eventually Hum Films and is now working to launch Hum News. In 2016 alone they brought in over 34 million dollars in revenue and they're one of the only entertainment companies publicly listed on the Karachi Stock Exchange. Her career is fascinating for many reasons. And one of them is how she's found a way to marry her artistic and creative passions with her entrepreneurial skills. She initially started as a producer for PTV in 1974 and eventually realized a need and opportunity to create quality content or shows for the channel. And so she launched Momo Productions, where she produces and often directs award-winning shows like Ye Zindagi, Dusri Dunya, and more recently Zindagi Guzar Hai. And one of the secrets to her success seems to be a skill of both identifying and then bringing out the best in people. And she's used this to introduce some of the country's most talented actors, such as Mahira Khan, Fawad Khan, and Kubra Khan. What's fascinating is how she's done all of this initially as a single parent, how she's used her platform to help stir the conscience and actions of a nation through the messages in her shows and productions. and how she's become a shining role model for women and men, kids and adults, entrepreneurs and artists and so much more. Um, should we get started? Well, I've done a lot of research on your story so far and have just been fascinated by the journey. And I think it might be helpful to kind of start back at the beginning with at least your the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey especially with Momo Productions from my understanding you were working at PTV you were making some incredible shows there and i'm fascinated to know what was the aha moment or the realization that you should jump into making this production company what was okay. what was that transition <clears throat> like or that aha moment like i think uh mm, from very beginning i was a type of uh, you know um, that i like achievements mm. since my childhood uh, up till now in this age i love achievements i don't work for money never in any in my life but uh, i want to see uh, the project the work what i am doing uh it should be very good and give me the results you know so that was my nature and uh, i was doing uh, work whenever I, i do work i keep in mind that it should be successful project and if the men can do this then why can not i do thing so since a childhood i was like this so when i started uh, uh, ptv pakistan television in 74 i started with uh, um, you know as a host as an anchor so so i was doing programs on uh, pakistan television as an host and it went very well and then uh, there came an opportunity of directors and producers also so somebody told me that all the programs you are doing and you are directing yourself why you are not coming in this and apply for this so i applied and i selected and uh, then i had training and uh, in childhood i wanted to do the you know uh, the civil services and other thing but anything which i liked i always like be a leader 
I was type of leader, you know. So I I did it uh, in the start. My children were very you know uh, young, and I, as a single parent, I have to balance the both things. Mm. So I was doing this also. So in the start, I was taking small programs, and then big programs. In in uh, I mean the time um, consuming programs. So I did. When I start children, then music, then serials, hmm. uh, soap operas and operas and uh, plays, and I got lot of awards in this also. Then I um, resigned from uh, I uh, I can from Pakistan Television, and I started my private production hmm. also. While I was doing. Pakistan uh, PT in uh, working in PTV. I uh, started my private production, Mumal production, also, and uh, with the permission of uh, uh, my organization. Like you just uh, started it, meaning you saw that there was a need for yeah. content and better content, yeah. better shows, better serials, yeah. and so you said, "Let yeah, me exactly. just start this." I mean, that's what I'm really curious about yeah. because. It sounds so natural in hindsight, but it must have not been that obvious at the moment to just start this production company. Yes, um, I can say I am a futurist. I can see I am a visionary person. Hmm. Uh, exactly, I saw that uh, the coming time in coming time, it will be a need hmm. of content. So I started a Mumal production, but I I must uh, tell you that uh, with production and direction and uh, with my production house, I was doing other works also. Hmm. It Because you are talking of an entrepreneur, so I am telling you, I was uh, doing indenting. Hmm. I was supplying heavy machinery through uh, steel mills. I was uh, I did uh, ship breaking, and um, lot of things. So you, you were know? an entrepreneur in spirit. Uh, 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 yes, in practice, in as practice. Well. you were doing too many things. So, uh, so, so you had some confidence, maybe from yes, these uh, other lot of confidence, hmm. and uh, I think I was very fortunate. Uh, because uh, as a Muslim, I can say that I was getting some help mm. <laughs> from God also. That uh, and every project which I which I did, I I was succeeded. Mm. You know, uh, and uh, every project was very successful. Mm. Anything. So in two thousand, I left. Uh, uh, Can I, can, can, I, can I still stay on Momo Productions for a little bit because I'm still just fascinated and um, still curious about a couple things. Okay. Um, so you started Momo Productions, I guess it was around the 80s, sometime yes, in the 80s. Okay, 86. And 96. 96? 96. Before that, I was doing different work, private uh, thinking, but the... Uh, Actual production house I started mm. that was ninety six. Okay, because I read about this show uh, Dusri Dunya. Dusri Dunya. And I think that was that like 89. in the yeah in the eighties, uh -huh. and was a Momo production. Production, yeah. So maybe you hadn't formalized the in 96, brand but yet, before that, but yes, you were still working on producing yeah. these shows. So that was completely independent of. PTV, yeah. right? Yeah. That was your production. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because I'm fascinated. This was a show that you produced in the U.S., but for the Pakistani diaspora, what was that experience yeah. like? I, I understand you had a crew that you had to fly into the U.S., mm -hmm. and I, I could just imagine it was like mm -hmm. total wild, wild west. Uh, when I was uh, doing, uh, I was working in uh, Pakistan television. At that time, uh, the, they were not taking private productions, mm. but I make them. You know, I discuss with them and uh, with my MD and with higher authorities that you should take uh, private productions also. 
So first time they said, yes, we will. So I uh, took that uh, opportunity and uh, I did this uh, uh, Dusri Dunya hmm. in San Francisco and uh, uh, Texas and New York. And it was uh, at that time it was wow. People said, oh, it was the first, you know, uh, uh, serial hmm. which uh, which was done in uh, America. So I did well, that. What was the experience like producing and, oh, and I directing? Oh, I enjoyed that? so much. Before that, uh, I did my Reiki and different places. And uh, I went, you know, uh, through legal. People mostly, uh, I believe in, you know, I always follow, follow this uh, rules and regulation. Hmm. So I didn't had any complication. I didn't got any complication uh, because... Uh, I took permissions, lot of permissions. Hmm. So it was also experience. What what I uh, your uh, son Janed told me that he remembers being on the set in San Francisco, especially, and he said that you just had this confidence that you had this crew, and hmm. perhaps the crew wasn't exactly sure what they were doing because it was a very young crew and maybe... New, totally new. Totally new. Uh, everything was on me. Huh. You know, That's I was training, give them, giving them training also. Hmm. And uh, there was a, such a short crew, you know, three people only. Hmm. Cameraman, audio person and my assistant. And uh, because at that time, I didn't have so much money. So everything I was doing, you know, I was assistant also. I was, uh, 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 you can say, sometimes I hold the boom also. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an experience and uh, Jeanette helped me so much. Yeah. And we uh, hired a van, big van for eight days or ten days. And Jeanette was driving. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, it was a fun. It was a fun. That's incredible. And I when I came back, everybody, marketer, they were, you know, offering me money that we will do marketing for you. Hmm. We will give you this and that and that. So it was also, you know, very exciting thing that you can do this thing. Hmm. I never thought that I'm a woman or man. Hmm. I always... I think that when I have to do this thing, I have to do this thing. When I thought that, so, and I always enjoyed, I never, never ever took this thing that uh, um, anything is difficult. Mm. I think nothing is difficult. Mm. If there are problems, problems for men, problems for women as well. So I don't believe in this that I am a woman. I'm single, so I don't never felt uh, pity on myself. Hmm. I feel more stronger that, oh, I can do this thing. So then it comes to around 2000, uh, and I guess things started shifting a lot with the government and the media and entertainment industry. And it sounds like you were at a real inflection point of sorts in that you had all these offers from different private channels yeah. that came up saying, like, join us, produce content for us. And yet you seem to take a different direction. Yeah. Can you yeah, tell us a I, little bit about that? Before that, I must tell you one thing. Yeah. Uh, when I started Mumal Production, I did a lot of production for this and some I did for BBC also. And uh, I was uh, while I was uh, doing this and the private uh, channels came to in 2000. Hmm. Because the government essentially uh, said, yeah. you can have, General so, Musharraf was there and said, yeah, you can yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. these private channels uh, now, whereas before yes. they never were allowed so to be there. So in 2001, hmm. my son Durayat came and uh, uh, he he was from business, uh, graduate uh, from business school. 
and he was doing marketing at that time and I was doing productions and he was uh, selling in PTV at that time only PTV was there and this was we took a lot, lot of risk also we told them that give us seven days uh, marketing and we will do that also so I, we did that also so we did a lot of through Mumal Productions. Yeah, okay. through Mumal Productions. We were doing Mumal yeah. Productions together, Duret. Yeah. And one day, Duret, uh, you know, um, told me that, uh, why cannot we start our own channel? I said, it was 2002 or 2003. He came in 2001 or 2002. I said, Duret, it is very difficult. How can we do this thing? He said, now all the time, uh, you are working and you are doing, giving so much good content. So I think and ma I am doing marketing and sales and he was very good in that. Mm. So I think this combination will do and uh, I said, okay, we'll try. So we jumped in that. And the one thing, mm, uh, this was also very new and good thing that uh, uh, this is the only network which is uh, public listed hmm. in the stock market, you can say, hmm. listed in the stock market. And there is, in Pakistan, there is no channel is public listed. Because we were very, you know, uh, clear that accounts and things should be very clean and clear and it should be uh, we should be running like a corporate hmm. way hmm. so we did that and then after that we uh, in 2003 and 2004 we start we did our feasibility in 2004 we started channel hum tv, hum TV by the name of uh, i television network hum tv under mm. that mm. Yes. so the going public came a little bit later obviously first you had to make the decision to start hum tv yeah and i read that this was the toughest decision of your life that you that you've said it's the it was the toughest it was decision the toughest decision because so why did you decide to make such that such I a think, tough decision uh, as I told you, by nature, I was a very courageous and uh, mm. very bold. I can jump anywhere, but it was not a blindly. You it know, not challenge. blindly. I, I calculate. Mm. I calculated that, yes, I can do this thing. And um, at that time, there were four, five, uh, three channels only. Geo, Airby. And before I came here, everybody offered me that come to us and do uh, production for us and when I uh, plan to start uh, uh, Hum Television Network, big television uh, uh, channel, he offered me that don't start channel mm. because people know my mind that she will go <laughs> and they said, mm. okay, they didn't want the uh, competition. You can do, uh, why don't you do only production house and we will take every uh, production which you, which you will do. Mm. I said, no, I have to do this. I have decided. Hmm. Then they, you know, somebody wrote me anonymous letters and some um, threats were coming that what you are doing, you don't know in this man's world, you are doing the wrong thing and you will suffer a lot. So uh, kind of, but I never thought of these things. I think hmm. uh, part of game. So Just sometimes you know, part, uh, sometimes I never told such things at that time to discuss this thing with my sons also. Hmm. Just kept it. I took myself that I will face it, hmm. and mashallah, we did. And now we have four channels. Hmm. And a uh, lot of publication, not a lot of few publications, uh, Masala, and uh, we have three channels Masala, we have an entertainment channel, uh, Hum TV, and uh, we have uh, Hum Sitare, the fashion lifestyle channel, and now we are starting our uh, own news channel, which you have heard about it. Uh, so this one and we have publication, newsline, uh, masala, magazine 
and the gleam and fewer dust. So I'm fascinated by the, the competition in this industry because a lot of industries that I've been researching, initially they're not that competitive, as in there's this huge unmet demand. But here it seems very quickly the competition was there. In fact, maybe before you even started, you said ARY was there and GEO and of there. course... PTV and now was seven, and there. there are 75, more than 75 channels. And now there are over 75 channels. <laughs> and so um, you once said that you have to be in you know, the top two or three positions. So I guess my question is, how have you managed to stay in those top positions? Or, or rather, has there ever been a time when you weren't in those top positions? And what did you do in order to fight back? Uh, I believe in quality work. And uh, I think from very beginning, I was uh, from this field, you know, direction and producer. If you, if you see that there are a lot of channels, but they are not from this profession. And I believe in content. Mm. So um, I did research and I worked and worked and I have knowledge about this content. So, uh, I, uh, how I can say, uh, te not teach, but uh, with my daughter-in-laws, my two daughter-in-laws are so, uh, you know, are working. And one is the best and I think the Pakistan's the most uh, popular and uh, I think she is the only, the most uh, leading uh, producer. This is uh, Momina Dured mm. and uh, there is Mumal and they are working on content and uh, so I think uh, it was uh, the work you know and second is that quality mm. and best content and the knowledge of best content. Like, for example, you guys started Hum TV and there were already these players or these channels in the market. How were you able to come in as this new entry or new entrant and make such significant progress into that number two and one spot? I'm telling you uh, that that was my strength because... At that time, I knew that ARY, hmm. they are not from um, this field. People, mm, at that time, usually they love that these people, you know, they are uh, mm, gold simmer and other people. How they were, when we go, uh, mostly writers told me that when we go there and we talk them, we cannot talk them because they don't understand. Hmm. And when we came, come to you, you know the subject. Hmm. So I think uh, that was the thing. Are... So I never uh, never had, you know, this fear that uh, they are big. Hmm. I always you thought that I can come, I can catch you. Exactly. Uh, and mostly the, uh, the subjects I am taking from my society. Hmm. The problems I am taking from my society. Hmm. So people, I think that's why... Uh, people were able to know that they are very good and, you know. You guys were initially, you made the decision to be a 24-hour drama entertainment channel. And I think at that time, there were, there were no such channels that were 24 hours of yes. continual shows, shows and yeah. content. It was very difficult. Why I, did I, you decide to, to do that? What was uh, the thought process? Because at that time, when we were starting this time, uh, that time, Pakistan television at, you know, 12, they finished their programs. Mm. But we started that we thought that we will do 24 hours. All private productions, all private uh, channels, they were doing 24. Mm. So I also thought it was very difficult uh, decision. Mm. But... Uh, but when you work hard, you can do it if you know your work. So I brought good people, uh, good writers, 
you know so many writers i mm, bring out and so and and then you mentioned that you made the decision to go public yeah uh, on the on the stock exchange and part of the reason was you wanted that transparency you wanted to be a fully you know uh, above the table organization um but what were some of the other reasons for going public i mean obviously there's funding and the resources yeah but perhaps it also elevates the channel in terms of the public's perception and and gives a lot of visibility into hum tv that you might not have immediately so i'm just curious what was if you were in the boardroom at that time what were the arguments about should we do this should we not do this what are the pros what are the cons what was the thought process definitely as you said that um, transparency i wanted this and uh, the funding definitely i didn't had so much so we i thought and uh, um, uh, other other thing uh, the new thought hmm. i want to bring that this can happen we can do this thing that we go public when nobody thought of it that they can go and do public this thing so but i love this thing that this industry should be big and it should be transparent it should be in stock listed and at the end you know it will give you benefit when you are transparent when you are quality people that's why if you see in uh, london also in england we are number 1 mm. and a uh, lot of uh, our uh, um, shareholders are from foreign also nobody has this uh, opportunity and this thing when you are good you are transparent and you are giving them dividend do you are uh, so lot of our shareholders are uh, from foreign london you new york so other places and when and when we talk about products and channels you mentioned that you've launched a number of different channels and different products what is the decision process like for for launching these like for example hum film has been mm. pretty successful and i read that I think last year two years ago you mm. had the highest number oh, of yes. Urdu releases mm. including films like Ben Roy what was the thought process about la- launching Hum film what kind of research did you do before launching it how did you know it would be successful definitely we do research and uh, uh, because uh, as i said that if i see that these things are coming and definitely it will go very high mm. so durad and myself durad uh, my son and his ceo as well so he also said that we should go in distribution and film productions uh, and we did that and mashallah as you said that uh, we done very good and uh, we did shows and nobody is doing so many so, um, so many good shows in pakistan i mm. think we can compete with india with anybody the award shows and mm. other shows we are doing so for the film for the film venture um did you guys like sit down with a bunch of people and have focus groups De- did you like were you doing surveys what I, i i'm just curious about the details like what does that process actually look like definitely we uh, we had focus group we had uh, uh, discussions in our board meetings and uh, our, uh, you know the content people that whether we should go into it or not and we researched for the marketing that how it will go in future i think uh, film future in pakistan is very high hmm. is very good this is beginning now uh, but if the government help i work with government also that please for 5 years you should not take any tax from film this work also i did with hmm. government and uh, they approved it so uh, at that time i saw that 
uh, there is a future in film. So the government approved that they, they you were essentially were lobbying, convincing them. Definitely, we had a lot of for the meeting, whole industry. You yes, were able with to with the information minister hmm. uh, Maria Morangzeb. She's I think she's a brilliant woman. Hmm. She said, "Okay, make some your you know presentation and this." We gave them presentation. Esan Iqbal and this. And Why there industry. should be no tax? Yes, for no the tax film for industry. film, and uh, they will help people and uh, the producers, mm. uh, and you know, and giving them opportunities for recording and this thing. So I think uh, it's good, and which I saw that uh, it's. Uh, it's uh, it's a futurist thing. Hmm. So I think, I think that's uh, fascinating. And coming back to that idea of new products, so Hum Film was obviously a huge success, or has been. Um, but I read about the radio stations. Yes. And that was not so much of a success. So what was the research process like there? You you essentially launched or bought four radio stations. Yeah. What was the research process like? Were you, did it seem like it was a promising venture? I mean, obviously it, it must have, but what did you learn from that experience? Uh, it was not very good experience. Uh, we did this uh, with uh, government hmm. because government was uh, selling their, some radios. And uh, I must say that what they promised, they didn't give us so much uh, things in that. And uh, Dured and myself, we sat with our team. And uh, one thing I must appreciate of my CEO, that when he said that this is not going good, it should, yes, it should be finished and uh, we should close the chapter. Hmm. So we closed that chapter very soon. Hmm. But still we have um, radio. Uh, in Faisalabad and uh, we are planning to have uh, more radio stations as you said that what why you uh, wanted to go in radio actually these all you know um, these all uh, complete this bouquet of uh, uh, what you can say the channel the Mm, publication and the radio, they are branches. Mm. So if you want to grow, you definitely you will fulfill the all branches. So this was uh, also uh, at that time we are thinking it and we didn't succeed in that. But I think as we are planning to bring radios more and we are going in films, uh, but we this time we are going with planning so I think we, hmm. we will definitely do some good things. Hmm. I wanted to ask a few questions about the management side of things because I feel this is one of your real strengths is being able to both identify talent and retain talent or prepare for or develop that talent. And you've said that there's huge competition, there's some 75 channels. And so I could imagine that this idea of attrition or people leaving the organization for another channel is a huge problem. And so my question is around how to prevent that, but then I've also read that you always have a successor for in case someone leaves. And, and my question is a little bit around like, how has that worked, always having a successor? How do you identify who the successor is? How do you train that successor? Is that a strategy you're still using or what have you learned? Yes, uh, definitely we are using uh, this and uh, we trained a lot of people. In the beginning there was no uh, people and if they came from some other channels also, but they were, you know, uh, brilliant. but. Hmm. They were not trained. So when I keep people, I give them training. And yes, it is my challenge. 
uh, which I am facing, that these uh, channels they are coming, they offer my people, you know, double trouble. If I am giving them eight lakhs, mm. they give them twenty lakhs, and they come to me. Sometimes they exploit me, mm. but I said, if you want to go, don't exploit. You if you want to go, I will train more. I, it will be very not difficult, but I know my work. It will time taking consum consuming thing, but I will do. So yes, sometimes I face this thing, but if you know your work, then it's okay. Hmm. <laughs> and how do you? I, I guess the precursor or the question before that last question around attrition is the identifying of talent in the first place and i i know that you brought some really incredibly famous people into the mm. film industry or the entertainment industry for perhaps the first time like abada parveen who was who you brought on to P ptv yeah. and mahira khan who was not it was her first film. Fawad mm -hmm. uh, Khan, Mayra Khan, uh, Sanam Saeed, Sanam Jung, Sanam Baloch, hmm. and a lot of, you name it, Fahad, Mustafa, and uh, everybody is uh, from Ham Television. Yes, I have an eye. To you have an eye, you know. And you must be doing something special in terms of encouraging and developing yeah, them yeah, yeah. as well. What, what do you feel that special thing is? I mean, could you put a like pen on it and identify this is it and yes, try and encourage say, other people to do the same thing? Yes, uh, yes. people say that uh, uh, I have an eye and I pick the people that he can do this thing, she can do this thing. Hmm. And then definitely we discuss with them and uh, give them understanding and teach them that how to do this thing because I think this is my work. Hmm as a director, you know, and uh, we produce a lot of uh, directors. At that time, only I did two, three directors. And um, I, uh, one thing I must tell you, in Pakistan television, from Pakistan television, I'm the only person which, which is doing such things. Hmm. You know? Only person who is directing. Directing and have our own channels. Mm -hmm. and uh, producing producing and successful channels mm -hmm. so yes yeah Jeanette was telling me uh, about I think one of the recent shows that you produced that you came back after 11 years of not uh, yes. directing and producing and and you were also not just producing it, but also directing it. I was directing it. And that just meant like so much more additional work that very few people these days would produce and direct because directing, you're running and around, management, yelling. Management and producer and that. Yes, I, after 11, 12 or 13 years, hmm. uh, you know, my daughter-in-law, she was forcing me to direct one more serial. I said it will be very difficult in this age and with management all the time because this is a very creative thing. All the time if you have one script you have uh, you are very involved in it. So anyway I did it. It was Zindagi Gulzar hai. Mm -hmm. and it became so hit that um, in India when the uh, Z people started Z Zindagi and they offered me a good amount of money and they took my this serial and mm. that was their first serial Zindagi Kulzar Hai. And from there, <laughs> lot of people called me, uh, even Shabana Azmi, you know, she's a big uh, actress. Mm. She uh, talked to me with telephone and she called me and she put me some message and she said, let me tell me one thing. It was such a beautiful um, serial mm -hmm. and the language was so beautiful. Okay. Uh, if I allow me that, she said that, wo jo ki chashni aapne humko di, wo bahut hi khubsurat bade dino baad humko sunne mein mili. So, 
these are my achievement mm. i love such things as you said that how you are doing this work it's, i enjoy my work people mostly people they said my son why still you are taking work with from your mother he says that i am not taking she is not sitting she enjoys this work That's so i that, enjoy my love i would love my work i know you enjoy it and it's very clear to see and now i'm telling you huh. they are pushing me and maybe one day to you will hear that uh, i did my film i'm going to do one film also and hmm. on a big screen so maybe i can't wait for that <laughs> i can't wait for that and and i know how much hard work it is because janet has told me some stories he remembers you putting in the 16 to 18 hour days and as a director losing your voice and not even being able to to talk yeah. so um I I think it's I think it's really incredible and I can imagine that there are a lot of low moments as well or difficult moments where yes. you're not sure if this thing's going to work out. I mean I I read about how about 6 months into starting Hum TV the money had run out and you guys weren't able to pay salaries at the time so some of the team had to take it out of their personal accounts. Yes, we were thinking because Three months, three four months, the um, advertising was not coming, and the people were, you know, the the mentality of Pakistan. Let's let's see how long she can do such good productions or ye. Or uh, um, and advertisers, advertisers were, were, were kind of also giving out. me tough time, huh. and uh, definitely few people they helped me also, and. they give um, what you can say commercials but you get the money after 90 days hmm. commercials money it comes after 90 days hmm. and we spend all the money you know on a production and we, and durad didn't tell me that the money is finished and we are you know and he said if i will say this thing you know i will disclose this thing to my office people hmm. then you know everybody we will panic. be shaky and uh, disappointed so the few people they sat and thought that uh, how should we can do the lower income people we should give them hmm. first uh pay higher management will manage withhold their salary but the yeah, lower uh, salary but, staff mm, i think thanks god that uh we didn't see that work, uh, how can i say that uh, very soon it was all sorted out advertising money Ma- started money uh, yes out. and advertising i was looking at the financial reports is like 70 80% of the revenue mm. so slowly that started coming in and i guess after 6 to 9 months but how did you have faith or how did you push through i mean was it faith what what pushed you through the low moments and maybe there are some other moments that you might think of i think everybody faced uh, uh, difficult moments in their life how you take it this is a thing when you know the difficult moment comes i always mm, think that i will be through from these you know difficulties and uh, god will help me and i do double or triple efforts hmm. to be successful but i never you know as you are also uh, asking i never ever discuss these things with people because i think this is my problem i should uh, solve it and i don't throw my you know people how people are here all the time they take sympathy mm. and till today i'm a very positive person till today i always think that uh, uh, if i remember then always in my mind comes good thing mm. the difficulties are always i forget that what had happened with me mm. you know what 
what you remember are, are the highlights or the good moments and not necessarily the, the, the low moments. And I want to ask about the motivation because you mentioned a Motive? little motivation, Motive. the inspiration behind the work. You have mentioned, and it's, I think, very clear that many of your shows are focused on very relevant and important issues in society. And maybe it's child abuse or women's rights or child marriage or domestic abuse. I mean, there are a lot of, lot of issues lot of. that you've... Uh, and so it almost seems like a, not like a secret mission behind the content. I mean, when you think about TV, you think about entertainment and... And this is much deeper than that. It's not just entertainment. And so I wonder how that motivates you, how you mm -hmm. think about the impact of the work, if that's one of the inspirations for you and for the rest of the team, or if the rest of the team don't really think about that so much. It's very difficult that uh, you take the deeper and dark issues and the sensitive issues of the society and bring them as an entertainment thing also, mm. the both. And at the end, give them the mm, thought-provoking things, you know. that. Uh, so, yes, I did uh, on child abuse and it was uh, taboo in Pakistan and they... I got a lot of uh, letter from uh, uh, regulatory authorities that it should not uh, run. So, but the society, they encourage me on social media and this and they, you know, that uh, um, this is very good and this is, this should be addressed. But I always, these sense, when I take sensitive issues, I always show them as an issue, not sen in a sensational and, you know, uh, the vulgar way. So people, that's why the people like that uh, it's, these are subjects are very sensitive. Hmm. If you slip here and here, you're caught. Hmm. So this is the thing I did in um, domestic um, abuse and domestic violence and you know it is everywhere everywhere but people don't talk and they if they want to do the entertainment they will show the love the um, you know love triangle and this and easy things hmm. but if you think this is hard core issue though it's very difficult right. so I always think that do it as the people who is watching it must involve in that and feel that it, yes, it happens everywhere. It is happening in my house also. Hmm. I am abused. My ch I should take care of my child. Hmm. You know, the closest relation, they abuse their child abuse. They are child abusers. So we should be very care careful. Hmm. And how we should be, we can be careful when we will show them that take lesson from this serial that if your child is disturbed and uh, he cannot say anything you must give them confidence talk them you know? hmm. and uh, in uh, domestic violence also I do that women should respect themselves. I don't uh, encourage them to fight in house, you know, to, with your husband and this thing and that. But they should respect hmm. themselves and don't allow anybody to hit them hmm. or this. So these are the things and um, I always think and in love also in uh, uh, of sensitive things also. These are the things uh, which make you successful and your work successful and so these are the things. Hmm. 
I think it's incredible. And what I love is, you know, we always talk about social entrepreneurship. And I think we have a, a little bit of a limited perspective on what social entrepreneurship is. That it's, you know, healthcare or education or you know, these kind of um, interventions that directly help poverty. But what I th- think is fascinating about the work you're doing is you're taking something that's not traditional or not commercial but not it's not obvious that it has a social impact but it's your platform that you've created over the decades Mm -hmm. and you're leveraging it to create an incredible impact and to do that in a way that's beautiful that's inspiring that's artistic that is art at the essence of it And so I'm just really thankful for you sharing your journey and and for doing all of the incredible stuff that you're doing and excited to see what the future holds because I I sense that you guys are just getting started even though you've already done so much. So thank you so much for, for taking out the time and for the work.